Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 6th and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery. You can see the sun rise across the Pacific Northwest. Check out that stratus layer all the way up to the coastal range, all the way up to the Olympic Mountains here as well. You can even see the individual valleys there up against the Olympic Mountains. A little bit of an onshore flow going on, but it's not going to be enough to save Vancouver, BC, Seattle and Portland from another very warm day across the interior. And then we've got this forest fire smoke still being generated across British Columbia and Alberta up here as well. That's not directly headed down towards Washington and Oregon right now, but we've still got forest fire smoke around from a few days ago when it was introduced, and we still got that firework smoke. We have not cleaned that out yet as well. Pretty weak gradients across the area. Not a lot of wind to stir things up, but we'll check the extended forecast. Looks like we have a weak trough kind of move through here as we go through the weekend into early next week, and we'll take a look at those things. We'll take a look at the thunderstorm activity here coming up as well and we'll also look at the extended forecast to see what kind of troughing may be in our future here so anyway here we go paradise mount rainier nice blue sky up there our snow patch is almost gone look at the washington coastline 54 degrees and nice and cloudy i know a lot of the moss backs out there along the washington and oregon coastline there like to see that this morning here we go toasty temperatures here look at sunday warming up towards you know some places might get up towards 100 degrees here and you've got the chance of thunderstorms mainly across the higher terrain the northern mountains here nice graphic from the national weather service spokane this is day one fire weather outlook here and check this out this brown hatched area I-S-O-D-R-Y-T, isolated dry thunderstorms. So these thunderstorms are not going to be producing much precipitation with them. So any lightning strikes that do happen there can have the benefit of that precipitation putting out those forest fires here. So that's why they call them the isolated dry. Some of those will be producing very little precipitation. This is day two here and kind of the same thing across eastern Oregon. And this is the convective outlook. It looks like it includes Seattle there, but it should not. We're not expecting thunderstorms here across western Washington today. Somebody got a little careless there with the coloring marker, and you can see this would be more accurate here, but not really including the northwest interior either. And this is day three, kind of rinse and repeat. This is mainly for the Cascades east for the next three days, and a lot of this activity is going to be highlighted over British Columbia and the northern Cascades, northeast Washington, some of Idaho and Montana as well. This is Seattle yesterday. Look at this, 91 degrees, 16 degrees above average. Looks like we tied a daily record high there, set back in 1958. No precipitation, none expected in the future here so far. But we'll take a look in the forecast here through early next week. A weak trough might try to drop a little bit of rainfall here. You know, we'll take anything we can get at this time of year. This is looking at Spokane. They've not yet updated their July 5th one yet, but the average high for this time of year is 81 degrees for a Spokane. Here we go, nine. 125 millibars. We're looking at the winds. Are we going to stir things up at all? Maybe for a couple areas, but for the most part, we've just got this general weak onshore flow, and it's not going to save Seattle and Portland from another very warm day here. You can see as we go through tonight, a little bit of gusty winds out of the west here across the east slopes of the Cascades through the gorge there, but really the gradients are quite weak across the area, and we're not going to fully clear out this firework smoke we generated here on the 4th of July just yet, so it's going to hang around, and hopefully we're not going to be introducing much more fire smoke from Canada down into the region here. We'll see how it goes here over the next couple of days but pretty weak gradients and light winds overall this is looking at the air quality index here at my house you can see a little bit of uh, forest fire smoke started to move into the area here on the fourth actually the third a little bit as it came in aloft but you can see all the pollution we pumped into our air here on july 4th here and still have not cleaned that out now we're going on two days here this is looking at 24 hour precipitation running total and as i scroll through here you can see that a lot of bc is highlighted in the thunderstorm activity can't roll one out across the washington Cascades as we go through Saturday here and then you can see by Sunday Washington Cascades and then you'll notice this little bit of an uptick as we go through the day Monday a little bit of a weak trough trying to move through here, and you can see it increase a little bit of precipitation here. Very scant amounts here, but it's something to watch. We could even fire, maybe we'll get a lightning strike here even west of the Cascades with the arrival of that trough, but not much precipitation to speak of. You can see it starts to produce some, uh, you know, pretty good precipitation amounts over there for Alberta there, east slopes of the Rockies as you go on in through uh, Monday and Tuesday coming up. Now, taking a look here at Seattle Tacoma International Airport, look, another very warm day today. Could get up into the 90s again, and you can see we're going to remain fairly warm here. You can see a little bit of a cool down here with some onshore flow with that weak trough moving through. We'll look at that here in a moment. Looking at Portland International again, headed towards the 90s and probably staying warm here through the extended forecast. Now, check this out. This is the GFS versus itself. This is last night's run versus yesterday afternoon's run. And it's kind of funny watching the GFS struggle with these troughs a little bit here, but it's kind of entertaining. Let's go ahead and look at it here. 
You can see the general trophy and hanging around. Not much difference here through 111 hours. And you can see that little bit of a system here swing through as we go through Monday morning. And that's what will bring a little bit more onshore flow and stir things up just a tad. But as we go off into the extended a little bit more, look at this heat dome trying to build down here across the southwest or this big ridge of high pressure, I should just call it. And you can see on last night's run, it's actually showing this thing building a lot more. And look at the previous run here trough much closer to the Pacific Northwest. So you can see the big uh, confidence issue we have by looking too far out into the forecast. You know, this has a big trough kind of over us, and this has a big heat dome building up across California here. Both these models here with uh, tropical systems underneath the, the southern periphery of that ridge. So continuing on there, yeah, you can clearly see the GFS having some issues here with this next trough coming in. So let's look and see what the European has. We're comparing its yesterday afternoons with yesterday morning's run here. So let's put that into motion. You can see the trough kind of hanging around. Here goes our system trying to swing through Monday. Very weak, almost not even really noticeable. And then you can see the next trough kind of comes around here as well. And you can see, again, the models have been trending with this ridge of high pressure a little bit stronger here and reaching up towards the Pacific Northwest a little bit more. So that's something to watch over the next few days. And it would just pro, you know, keep our heat going here across Pacific Northwest. But you can see more of a zonal flow here and some more troughing a little bit closer here across a lot of the area. This one still has this, you know, somewhat of a polar low trying to dip down across BC here as well. Maybe it'll kick some onshore flow for some areas. The further north, the better it's going to be for you. But then on through the extended, check this out. Look at some of this troughing. It has about 348 hours out there, way off into fantasy land. Just something to wish for here if you want the cool down and to stir up the atmosphere. This is looking at the National Blend of Models, daily 2-meter max temperature. Look at Seattle headed for another 90-degree day. Portland, similar. Very warm eastern Washington. Some of the valleys in BC, eastern Oregon here, quite warm across Pacific Northwest. A little bit of a cool down coming tomorrow. I see Seattle probably mid-80s, Portland maybe upper 80s there. Eastern Washington, another very warm day on Friday, Saturday. Not much of a cool down coming for places east. A little bit of a cool down coming, but still above average and quite warm here for Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, BC. And we go through Monday, maybe get enough onshore flow to stir things up and drop us a little back down towards average here, maybe across places west of the Cascades. We'll see how that goes. And we continue on to the future, and you can see we remain average, above average here as we go through mid-July. Here we go. Six to 10 day temperature probability outlook. Seattle averages about 78 degrees during this time frame here. Spokane 85, Boise and Portland here. So you can see we're generally above average here for Seattle, Portland and even better odds here are going to be above average across Spokane and Boise here too. This is looking at six to 10 day precipitation outlook. Look at this across the Southwest big deficit of precipitation expected through mid-July. And this is mainly for the thunderstorm activity here as we go through the afternoons here across the Cascades, North Washington, and this would be even higher probably across portions of BC, the Rockies, and Alberta. Now, taking a look here, we looked at this yesterday, but this is the June 1st here, El Nino anomaly plume here for El Nino out across the Pacific Ocean. And there is new data from July. And you can see not much of a change, but maybe a little tiny bit of an upward trend here. Probably headed towards a strong El Nino, at least according to the European. And we were almost in moderate as we speak right now. This is the CFS kind of calling for something, something similar here. You can see 1.5 would be strong El Nino territory. Most of the ensembles head, have us headed there as we go towards fall. We'll just watch that as we go. Now, this is looking at sea surface temperature anomalies. And you can see... You're looking at the Pacific Ocean here. Here's Asia, North America. There, there's Australia and South America. And you can kind of see this classic La Nina signature across the equatorial Pacific as we go on in through later into the season here is August, September, October, November, December. And if I scroll down a little bit here, you can kind of see this continues all the way in through 2024 here. Definitely big changes from the La Ninas we've been having here the last three seasons. So... Yeah, it'll be fun to watch and see what this winter brings. El Nino doesn't always mean no snowfall here across Pacific Northwest as we've gotten some big snowstorms in our past here during El Nino years, but it generally means warmer as a whole. So anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are doing all right with that. Uh, you know, the air quality is in the moderate category now. It has improved a little bit here, but we still haven't cleared out that firework smoke here and that forest fire stuff. And hopefully this stays out of the Pacific Northwest, but it's probably going to head somewhere. So not good news here with those fires still burning here across much of Canada. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are getting out and enjoying the weather here. Summertime, definitely here across Pacific Northwest. And so 
I'm headed down towards southwest Washington. I may be installing a weather station on one of the highest hills down here, the Willapa Hills. So by the time we get towards the windstorm season here, we'll have uh, some prime data here for those big windstorms that roll into our region. I'll go check that out today, and I'll report back to you guys later. But anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.